this is Eva with Once Upon a Timeline. And today I'm going to discuss some very recent human anatomy organ changes. A lot of these are very recent, like just the last month or so. Okay, first of all, we'll go over the lungs. Now, I'm not exactly sure when this one actually came in, but you can see that the one lung has three lobes and the other lung has two lobes. Um, I remember really clearly the lung only had two lobes per side. The lungs were both symmetrical. Um, in recent months, the heart has been expanding and pushing this lung out more and more and more. Um, these lungs are becoming less and less symmetrical. One of them dips down lower than the other. And at, recently at the top, I've known these been, noticed these have been peeling back over here. So that's some of the recent lung changes, especially this one lobe actually kind of picks me out because it used to be just two per side. Okay, um, today earlier I was listening to Scott Harrison's live chat and they were talking about this division in the liver. Now for me, the division of the liver into two lobes was something that happened about one year and five months ago. And I remember because it was one of the first MEs that I, was, I really saw happen in, in real time. Um, I'd heard about the liver getting bigger. I saw that it looked bigger and I started watching the anatomy and I actually saw the split develop over the course of several days, way back in um, September, about a year and a half ago. So that, I remember how much that freaked me out because it was one of the first ones I just saw it happening right there. Now, since then, uh, this, this liver has gotten a little bit bigger. I mean, it was already really big by the time I started watching it. And the second lobe has gotten a little fatter. Um, it has kind of laid down more, uh, more, a little bit more horizontal, maybe uh, just a little bit bigger, but not a huge difference from what I knew it about a year and a half ago. Okay, now the stomach, that has changed a lot for me. I mean, a lot of people might remember it as just being kind of a sack and a kind of a straight shot for the food right down into the stomach. Uh, the stomach continues to lay down. It, it was pretty much upright when I first started watching it about a year and a half ago. Uh, now it almost lays totally down, and that's something that's just been changing really gradually for over a year. Uh, another thing I noticed just recently is images. I, I look at these images a lot, and one thing I did not see on all the images that I now do see in a lot of them is this little gallbladder kind of stuck on there. I, I'm not sure what's going on, but for some reason they're including that now. Um, another ME that many people see that's a little bit older is the large intestine which used to be called the large intestine most of the time, but nowadays is mostly called the colon. And uh, for me, the large intestine was stacked neatly below the small intestine. It would go to the small intestine, and then it would go to the large intestine. The large intestine didn't look that different than the small intestine. It was kind of the same smooth sausage-looking material that the small intestine was, and it was stacked under here. And about mm, three years ago, my mom got pancreatic cancer, which of course is horrible. And one thing that I do remember at that time is looking at images of the region and I saw this large intestine had one loop that at that time was just halfway up. Um, it was just kind of going across the front of the small intestines. And I remember being confused by that because I had not seen that before. It was not anything I had learned in anatomy class previously. So I was like, how did I not know about that? Um, since then, now, of course, we see it's all the way up here. It's way more bumpy. It looks like some kind of weird insectoid pattern to it instead of just being the smooth sausage. Uh, one thing I've noticed really recently is that in a lot of images, some of these edges here are now pushing back and bending back around the back of the body so that you don't always see uh, sometimes you just see kind of a loop across the, the former stomach region here, and you don't always see these edges. So that, the, the kind of roller coaster pattern of this large intestine continues to change. Um, and then one other thing that I've been kind of keeping an eye on lately is this, uh, the appendix, because uh, you may have heard that recently they said that the appendix is not actually vestigial, but is in fact probably used for storing good bacteria. So for me, this appendix was a lot smaller. And one thing I've noticed that a lot of images are showing the appendix now. It used to be they would just leave that off because it was vestigial. But it also just looks a lot bigger to me. 
And some of the images are showing a lot of the vasculature to the appendix now. And so I'm thinking maybe the appendix is sort of a up-and-coming organ in more ways than one, and we should probably keep an eye on it. Although the changes there seem kind of minor, minor compared to a lot of these other changes. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention, and this is kind of an older I mean, A lot of people have talked about the changes in the heart. Uh, I just wanted to chime in and give my two cents. What I remember for humans is that humans had a three-chambered heart. And that set us apart at that time from animals that had a two-chambered heart. And so we were taught that we were all special because we had this extra chamber and that was our evolution, that we were above the common animals. Well, now humans have a four-chambered heart and so do all the other mammals. So we now don't even have that difference from the other mammals. And that was quite a ways back. I can't say it was all the way back to childhood, but you know, at least 15 years ago, we had a three-chambered heart in my timeline. And it was a big deal back then because it was something that made us special. Uh, now it's just not a big deal. Everybody's got a four-chambered, I guess. So those are some of the um, changes, both old and new, that I'm chiming in on. Um, now a couple other things here. Uh, I'll, a number of the images are starting to show the liver with this kind of an S curve. It's a little bit more just kind of a shimmy pattern here instead of more a cohesive blob. So I think that's kind of interesting. I think that it's still getting its final form. Another thing here is they show the outline of the pancreas. And um, when my mother had the cancer, the pancreas was a lot shorter and it was more bulbous on the bottom, and then it just kind of had a little a little nubby finger out here. So it's really kind of stretched out. Uh, it's really laid out, and it's also bigger than I remember. It was it was pretty kind of a small thing at the time. It, it really looks pretty large to me now. Um, and this this image does show the colon slash large intestine going way back behind the body here. Um, so I think that's a pattern that we're going to see more of in more images uh, as time goes on. But another thing that I saw here that was really weird was, what's all this uh, yellow line stuff on the colon? Um, there's another image of it. What is all this yellow stuff here? I mean, I, I look at, I've been looking at these images of the intestines for a, a year and a half, and I do not recall ever seeing this dangly stuff. So on here it says that there are tinea coli and uh, epiploic appendages. So I was pretty curious about that. And also you see all this yellow stuff in here. I mean, what is that? We didn't, I have not seen that on images in the past. Um, it seems like a, a fair number of images now have that and that's the mesentery region. And if you recall, it was an Emmy a couple months ago that the mesentery suddenly got um, officially declared an organ. Like it's been there the whole time, but we didn't really realize it was really an organ or some kind of baloney. So suddenly we're seeing the mesentery really prominently drawn on a lot of images, which I think is interesting. I mean, there could be reasons for it, but I, I think that's really interesting. Okay, so anyway, going to the epiploic appendages, which apparently are also called epiploic appendixes. So that's kind of interesting because I was talking earlier here about the regular appendix. And I noticed, I have noticed in about the last six months that they're calling this the vermiform appendix. Instead of use, just being the appendix, I mean, it used to be you just had one appendix and it was the appendix. But now this is the vermiform appendix. So now I'm kind of seeing why, because now all this, the slimy stuff here, all these blobs, they're also appendices. They are the epiploic appendices, um, or epiploic appendages, or epipendix eploica, or blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they are small pouches of the peritoneum filled with fat and situated along the colon, but are absent in the rectum. They are chiefly appended to the transverse and sigmoid parts of the colon. However, their function is unknown. So I, I just think it's interesting. We're seeing these, these things. I've never seen them before. They're saying the 
function is unknown, but yet they're drawing them in here, and I've never even seen them. And I mean, look at the length of this wiki. I mean, it's like it's just like one paragraph long. It's there's almost no references. So I'm wondering if this is kind of really a new thing. I mean, it hasn't even developed yet. You think they have some clue, but um, also. Let's see, in this image here, you can kind of see there's kind of a line here that the little epiploic appendices are coming off of, and that also is something I had not seen before on the colon, is this kind of a thickened line here, and that is the tinea coli. The tinea coli are three separate longitudinal ribbons of smooth muscle on the outside of the ascending transverse and descending and sigmoid colons. Interestingly enough, they, uh, they converge at the root of the vermiform appendix. So the appendix uh, is kind of a stopping place for them, which I just, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. I've never seen these muscle layers before. Uh, they're probably very useful in keeping uh, materials flowing along the colon, so um, it's probably good that we're getting them. But uh, I never, I've never seen those on any images in the last year and five months. So that's pretty interesting for me. Okay, so earlier I talked about how the lungs over here have this big wide space here. Now part of it might be able to blame it on the heart because the heart is really expanding and pushing out the lungs. But up here, I just noticed recently that there's still a ton of space up here as well. And um, recently in a, a post on my favorite sub reddit sub called retcon kind of explained that to me because i just i didn't see what the deal is up here i figured there there's going to be something put in there well there is somebody did a post on the thymus gland and uh, they said they'd never heard of it and i have to admit that i'm not sure when i first heard of the thymus gland i don't think i've heard of it when i was you know in college or anything but um i i have heard of it maybe five six years ago um, at that time, though, it was a little tiny thing, just like a little nothing. That's why it was kind of an afterthought where people didn't know about it because it was tiny. Well, look at it now. It's huge. It's got two big lobes. And, I mean, it, it on the surface of it, it looks almost as big as the heart. I mean, that's a, that's a beast. It's all on, on the trachea there. It, it's, it's, it's huge. Two lobes. Look at that. I mean... How can I not know about anything that big? It's like as big as a friggin' organ or something. So pretty creepy. Also, this thyroid gland, I do not remember it wrapping all the way around the trachea like that. I mean, it's almost like choking out the trachea. Again, I remember the thyroid gland is kind of just a, a blob. A gland is like kind of a circular type of a thing. So um, that also has definitely changed for me. Um, so there, you know, there's a lot of ongoing changes, um, it, it, especially just lately. So keep an eye on all the organs. Uh, tell me what you remember. If, if you've been tracking these, uh, what have you noticed? Have I left anything out? This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Time. Now.